Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. It's Jason and hope you're okay. We're looking at the Word of God. So let's come before the Lord. Father God, we come before you today. We give you the prayers and the glory and the honor. Father, I pray that this message will be a blessing to those who hear it. And Father, it will help them and comfort them in the name of Jesus Christ and for your glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. So if you'd like to uh, turn to six, Psalm 66 to start off with. I'll just pray again. Lord, we just praise you and thank you today. We give you the glory and the honor. Lord, we thank you that you are our God, and we just adore you today. We give you the glory. And, oh God, we can do nothing without you, and we pray that you might bless us now. Oh God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you turn to Psalm 66. Psalm 66. We reword, we read these words, Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to, crying to you, cringing to you. All the earth worship you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name, Selah. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds towards the children of men. He turned the seas into dry land, and they passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Selah. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us, for you have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on your back. You let men ride over our, back, our heads, and we went through the fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will perform my vows to you, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fattened animals, and with smoke of the sacrifice of rams I will make an offering of bulls and goats, Selai. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened, but truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. So we're looking at basically dealing with impossible situations. One writer says, I, I, can't, I can't understand it, said Michelle. Just when everything seemed to be going fine, this happened. Now I'm back where I started. I don't feel I can take it anymore. It's one thing after another. I get so angry and upset when things keep going wrong. If God loves me, why does he allow things to happen? Uh, maybe that's what you're asking today. Why does God allow things to happen? So when you says becoming a Christian doesn't mean that we are automatically delivered from problems or that we will never have to face serious difficulties. So we're always re got to remember that Christians are, are not exempt from suffering. This idea that Christianity is just a bed of roses and that nothing bad's going to happen to us is just not biblical and not true. Becoming a Christian doesn't mean that we're automatically delivered from the problems or that we will ever have to face serious difficulties selling news. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world, says our Lord in John 16.33. You might be facing an impossible situation today. You might be facing a, a situation where you feel there is no hope. But I want to tell you that there is hope that you might think it's impossible but God is with you Psalm 119 67 71 says before I was afflicted I went astray but now I obey your word it was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees God allows these things 
to happen to us so that we can seek him. So in you says, if we shrink from the difficulties and seek to be free from irritations, we may sever ourselves from potential benefits. But if we respond with expectancy and open heart and mind, we will then we will, I think, then all God to allow God to achieve His highest purpose in us. The more problems you face and overcome, the more God can use you in helping others know the deep meaning of His purpose for their lives. So in use. So I've got a few questions. God is greater than you ever imagined. In an impossible situation, the darkness seems to overwhelm and you can't see a way forward. The darkness seems a great power, greater than you and greater than anything else. But God is greater than the darkness. Psalm 66 verse 4. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Napoleon tried to get the world to praise him. Hitler tried to get the world to praise him. But nobody can be praised ultimately only God. He is the one who gets the praise and the glory. Why? Because he is over everything. He has all power. And he is over your darkness today. He is over the impossible situation. Every human being must praise God because he is majestic. He is great. That's why we praise him. He is over all things. William Gurnall says this, The relationship God has with his saints assures his power on their behalf. You are his own dear child, and most parents take care of their own. Even the silly hen scurries to gather her brood under her wing when the trouble appears. How much more will God, who is the father of such instincts, in his creatures stir up his whole strength to defend you a mother sitting in her house hears a sudden cry outside and knowing the voice says at once this is my child she drops everything and runs to him god responds as with a mother's heart to the cries of his children william gurnall an old puritan every tongue will confess jesus is lord and every knee will bow he is a great god my friends philippians 2 10 and 11 we're all going to confess him. We're all going to bow before him, great and small. This is a great God, and a great God is with you today. Psalm 101, verse 1. I will sing of your love and justice to you, O Lord. I will sing praises. We'll sing praises because he's a great God. Do you see how great God is? See him over the mountains. See him over the stars, how he holds them in his hands. And this great God is your God right now over the impossible situation you are in once you realize that god's mighty power is in charge of your life you will quit worrying because you know that god is over your worries william gurnall said once you realize that god's almighty power is in charge of your life you will quit worrying about how to fight your enemies number two God can make a way through the impossible situation. God brings us to situations that seem impossible. It seems, humanly speaking, no way forward. We wonder how we can deal with it. But he says in Psalm 66, verse 6, He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. You see, they came to that impossible situation. They couldn't face it. They couldn't deal with it. And yet God made a way for them. He'll make a way for you. In all impossible situations, don't deal with the problem in your own wisdom and strength. Remember, it will make it worse. As God opened the Red Sea for the millions of people and for the lead of Moses, so he will open the way for you. No matter how difficult it is. One family said, numb with shock. They nevertheless had a sense of God weeping, sweeping them along. This is a family that were broken by bereavement. God will make a way. Psalm 37, 24. Though he stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. He'll uphold you, my friend. God will get you through no matter how hard it is. 
He will make a way. So don't give up. Don't discourage. He promises that no situation is too hard for you. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. He is with you today. William Gurnall says, are you called to suffer? Do not flinch in fear. God knows the limits of your strength. His watchful eye is always on you, and then you stagger. When you stagger, then he picks you up. William Gurnall, the great Puritan writer. You ask the question then, why does God allow me to go through suffering? So many Christians are suffering and finding it difficult, and they wonder why. Psalm 66, verse 7, For you, O God, tested us, you refined us like silver. God allows you to go through suffering because he wants to refine you. This impossible situation, this impossible situation that you faced, that's driving you almost mad to distraction, is there so that you look to him. And God is God. Every problem is sent from God so that we might develop, we might grow. He wants to teach you about your faults. He wants to teach you to lean on him. He wants you to grow in patience and love. There is a meaning for your suffering. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Notice these words. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined what by fire may be proved in genuine and may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus is revealed. You see, you're going through suffering because you're being refined, just like gold has to be refined so we can see his purity. God wants to refine you so that you are pure and that he are, you're ready for heaven. God does not sort the problem or maybe... You're finding it difficult for God is working in your life. So when you says when a trial or temptation comes, you turn in one or two directions. You turn towards the problem or towards the grace which God provides. Turning to the problem produces anger, irritability and sometimes depression. Turning towards the grace that provides enables you to rise above the difficulty and to touch God in a new and vibrant way. James 1 2 Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. James 1 2 How can you deal with the impossible situation? You could run away, but if you run away, you'll make it worse. Or you can face the problem in God's strength. And if you do, you will learn the lessons that God wants for you in your life. Sin is no option. Living in sin is no option. We live for praise. We praise God. And we go forward in God. We honor God. So we've come to the end. You can face the impossible situation. God is with you. And he'll guide you and he'll help you through these situations and you'll know his help and you'll know his strength. Let us come before the Lord and ask his blessing now. Father God, we come before you today and we confess, Lord, our weakness. We confess, Lord, we face the impossible situations. Lord, it seems impossible. But we can either flee or run. We can either deal with it in our own strength or we can deal with it by turning to you and receiving your grace and strength and your wisdom and your resource. And so, oh God, we pray that you would give us the strength and the resource to face the impossible situation. Be with those who are hurting today and broken. Minister to their hearts, Lord, and give them peace and joy today. And help them with their problems, O oh God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for your glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. I hope that you found that a blessing. And may God bless you today.